Hey everyone, my name is Danilo Petrovic. I'm Ilya Marchenko. I'm Dennis Kuda. I'm Evgeny Donsko. I'm Henry Laksan. I'm Peter Turepko and, and you are listening to the Game to Love podcast. podcast. Hey, welcome back, tennis fans. Another podcast, another day. And, uh, well, it's the one which really needs to be spoken about. It's been a lot of stuff going on in the media right now with Novak Djokovic and some attacks from some media outlets uh, unjustly and uh, some other players as well coming out and speaking out about the latest Djokovic antics on court. So... It's going to be a bit of an interesting one, this one. It's going to ruffle a few feathers, I feel, JG. Yeah, and it's something I had to speak about. I spoke to you yesterday saying we have to do a podcast on it because I just think it's very unfair. Djokovic has been made to be a bit of a scapegoat with the timing of his comments about pressure and the fact that within a few hours, I think it was just a few hours after, Simone Biles withdrew from the Olympics, obviously with all the mental health stuff, what's going on. Um, which is our own thing altogether. I don't really want to touch on that too much. But Djokovic was talking about pressure relating to him winning the Golden Slam and what people have done on Twitter. So big names, I'm talking people with a lot of followers, with the little verified tick. They've taken his answer on pressure, talking about the Golden Slam. They've taken it completely out of context and used it against something which is... uh, Very topical in in terms of mental health and Simone Biles withdrawing um, and used it to make him look very bad. And I can't I can't accept it. People know I'm not someone to jump to Djokovic's defence very often. In fact, this probably be one of the few times I do. But even big Rafa fans, Federer fans, they're coming out and saying, what is this nonsense? It's complete nonsense. And the problem is it's being shared by thousands of people who necessarily don't understand tennis or watch tennis, and they actually think Djokovic is making these comments about Simon Biles, who, when he's not. He's no. simply asking, or answering, sorry, about his own um, circumstance, which was him going for the Golden Slam. Unfortunately for him, he wasn't able to do it, but he was just referencing that side of things. And I know you've got some quotes up, so we might as well bring them up. And that was, um, I don't know if I'm starting with actually what he said, maybe. Yes, the man in question, Justin Barragona, was where this sort of originated from with this tweet where he says, Djokovic two days ago on Simone Biles, where you put that as the staple of your tweet, then you've already done the damage already. I just want to add, it's not just him, though. There's loads of people bigger than him, this guy. I think this was like one of the big ones. It's one of the the big ones. Yeah, yeah. This is the one uh, Susan Sarandon and other people like this have been retweeting his stuff, unfortunately, and they've all had to come out and apologise that they weren't aware that this was, in fact, factually incorrect, what this uh, person was tweeting and other outlets. So he's saying pressure is a privilege, this was based on two days ago on Simone Biles, apparently. Pressure is a privilege. If you are aiming to be at the top of the game, you better start learning how to deal with pressure and how to cope with those moments on the court, but also off the court, all the expectations. And, well, the facts he's talking about uh, on the court are <laughs> sort of alluding to probably more tennis than uh, anything else, but the yeah. fact that he's try to tie it in and i don't like it i don't like the fact that there's this bad guy mentality they're trying to like plaster onto novak djokovic again stop doing it it's not fair just because he's one of the biggest if not the biggest name in tennis right now you're just trying to put another problem on his plate to deal with and he has enough uh i don't i'm I just feel a bit sorry for Djokovic that he's always having to play defensive mode when it comes to the media. Yeah, well. it's just not right because it's just factually wrong. And, uh, and there was that's only one section of the interview he was talking about. I know you've just picked out a little bit there, but he was saying like, pressure is a privilege, my friend. If you are aiming to be at the top of the game, you better start learning how to deal with the pressure. Um, you can 
the, the, the way you can sort of turn this on its head and say he didn't actually deal with the pressure too well. So you can talk <laughs> about it in different sides of things. I know we're going to touch on the, the, the comments made from Rafa later on and some other bits. But just on this thing, it's, it's um, I don't know. I'm not sure what happens next. Is he going to sue some of these media corporations? Um, he's definitely within his right to do, I feel, yeah, because it I has been so. spread and it is definitely uh, false. I don't know if we're going to go into another screenshot. Uh, yeah, well, I'll go on. Is, is this the actual tweet uh, or another quote here from him, is it? Yeah, well, without That's pressure, the there's no professional sport. Okay. If you're aiming to be at the top of the game, you better start learning how to deal with pressure and how to cope with these moments on the court, but also off the court, all of the expectations. Uh, next one. Next one, yeah. So, uh, well, yeah, this one's a bit of a terrible one by the looks of it to to start it well with... look how many set mate it's got over twelve thousand likes probably a lot more as well i'm sure it's been retweeted as well met multiple times uh and it's just not fair calling him a scumbag yeah, um man. saying when racism sexism and hypocrisy meet like come on this is just not wow. fair this is terrible and you've got to look at other players on tour do they get the same um scrutiny as what djokovic does why can't they take sometimes Never. the bad things because the pressure comment, uh, the, the problem is I can see the other side of things in terms of him talking about this pressure and then him not handling it very well and not acting like a good champion on court. That's another issue altogether. I don't like the way he acted. I agree with Rafa and the fact that it is a bit childish and not a good look for the sport. But to say he was relating it to something completely uh, else in Simone Biles is just not right. Yeah, it's disgusting, really. To think that you can just put out this sort of tweet with no factual basis whatsoever and people jump on the bandwagon and there's a lot of people that are already on Djokovic's back anyway. Uh, at least spell his name right as well if you're going to slag him off. Uh, Djokovic. Yeah, nice one. Uh, it's, just, uh, it's just frustrating just for me because we know how much people jump on him or jump on his back. If he wasn't the world number one, would this even be in the media? Probably not. And that's the, the problem that he has. He's the top player of the sport and people will just keep on throwing stuff at him, trying to knock him down all the time. And he's forever defending against the media about stuff that he hasn't even done half the time. Some of the times he has done some stuff, but they try and twist it in a little way all the time to try and get something out of him. They just want a little sound bite. They want a little, they just want him to react in a negative way all the time so they can plaster some other slander on the front, on the back page or front page. Just a, it's like defamation. And that's why I think you're right. Yeah, he could, right. he could go uh, to court or take him to court for some of these things or well, another court he's normally on the court most of the time maybe you go to another court <laughs> take him take him to the other I wonder if he's uh, good on that court yeah maybe he'll be even better on the uh, the other court mate so uh, I just think it's uh to to release something like that and to get 12,000 likes on oh, that mate, this and... is not the big I've seen one with hundreds of thousands of That's retweets just... and stuff and it's because people I don't. I'm not blaming the people retweeting it because they're just looking that at um, at face value. They don't know the context what went no. in behind it, and it, it does seem a bit. Um, I can understand why people would assume it is about her because it did happen at exactly the more or less the same time. Um, it's talking about pressure in tennis, and there's been a lot of controversial opinions referring to it. But the, the case was he was not asked about it whatsoever, and he no. was talking about the Golden Slam, and. Yep. I know you've done a bit of digging about previous stuff with the media. So maybe we can talk about some of them bits as well, because Djokovic has always had a bit of, of a torrid affair with the media. And it's not doesn't seem to be as fair as what it would be with, say, other players. Yeah, I mean, I was just going back uh, earlier on today and just flicking through a few of the, the old press conferences and stuff like that that Djokovic has had. And they're very antagonistic, the way that the press go for him. Obviously, the, the thing that he had were, with regards to the players' council as well, he was obviously supposed to be part of 10 players who were in charge of the players' council. Did, did the other nine players get as much critique on uh, what's going on in the players' council? No. All di directed at Novak Djokovic. He has to answer all the questions. And it... 
the way that Djokovic handled it, he was right to sort of go back and say, I don't have to give you an answer now. Like you're trying to get a reaction out of me now. You're telling me something which is, for all I know, not even based on facts. And you want me to come back with a rebuttal to counter that. So you've got a story. And that's all that you're trying to do. I'm not going to give the, you the answer because there's another nine people plus the head of the ATP. There's a lot of other people involved and he shouldn't be the spokesperson all the time for, for everybody. And unfortunately, he does uh, react. The problem is, sometimes. mate, the spokesman thing, that comes with the nature of being at the top. Yeah, it so does. So I can understand that. I just don't like the fact that they he's expected to have to speak out on a lot of things. And then when he does, he gets criticised when... Probably Always. most people would say exactly the same thing as what he said. But because someone's got to say it, he gets in trouble for it. There's so many instances I can think of recently. And I've always looked on the side of, you know, turn a blind eye to it, turn a blind eye to it. Because ultimately, I'm not a big Djokovic stan. I let it sort of go. But I've sort of been racking them up a little bit. And this was my boiling point. It sort of tipped me over. Because to see this... Um, especially being a tennis podcast who cover all the tennis stories. We was watching all of the matches of, of Novak Djokovic. We know that that's not the case. And when that interview come out, I agree with everything he said, if I'm honest, about pressure. Um, we talk yeah. about it a lot. I can't look at any quotes he said from that interview and diss him for it. In fact, I quite I respect the bravery of coming out and, ha and saying that, that pressure is part of the game. I 100% agree with that. You can't say, I've seen some people trying to turn it on the fact that is he sort of referencing Osaka and her issues, but well, he was one of the first people to message Osaka. Yeah, um, yeah. There we go. Just well done for uh, saying that one. Yeah. As you see here, this one's another negative one. And instead of just adding Simone Biles, we're adding in Naomi Osaka as well into this one because apparently he's criticizing both of them, not just uh, one person in this one. Yeah, if you are aiming to be at the top of the game, you better start learning how to deal with the pressure and how to cope with these moments on court, but also off court. Uh, and they're saying Novak Djokovic lecturing Naomi Osaka and lecturing. Simone Biles two days ago. Lecturing. Like, it really annoys me. The just the simple one word put in, that is so negative that you would be lecturing people and they're two women as well. So you can see it from another it's sexist as well. Yeah. Obviously the racial angle as well. You can fire all of the uh, all of these weapons at Novak Djokovic. It's disgusting. He's not said anything like this to any of them. Leave the guy alone. Just, Mate, he's uh, been called that. He's been called sexist, racist, all of this from something he's not even done. It's it's disgusting, mate. I'm absolutely and the fact that so many people have jumped on on board with this and yeah, not wait, even... just quickly, as Tanway saying, that's what I was about to say. Asaka was what uh, said that Djokovic helped her in the situation. He actually sent her a message. Um, <laughs> so it's <laughs> just a load of it's just a load of nonsense. The worst problem I have with it is it doesn't really affect me and you because we know the truth. It doesn't affect probably most people in this live chat because they know what's going on. They've been watching it. They've been following the interviews. They're in the know. The my problem is all the people who don't necessarily watch tennis. Yeah. So, so I could potentially have a chat with my dad who's not watching too much, and he could be like, "Oh, did you see all this thing about Djokovic coming out and criticizing Biles?" And uh, yeah. he's a bit of a racist, isn't he? And I'll be like, "What? You don't have a clue. You don't know what's going on." And that's the problem. It's people who don't know, and they rely on say just flicking through Twitter every now and then and seeing the stories, um, or they don't even have to go on Twitter. It was posted on a few um, news articles online as well, yeah. and. It's just not fair. It's simply not fair because it's given a false um, account of what happened and given a false image for Djokovic when it's when really we should be judging him on what he does on the court. Well, the one thing I want to say as well, which is something I was meaning to bring up, is once these things are all out there, it it's like it sticks. And then when someone goes, oh, sorry, I, I, I got that wrong. Guess what? That sorry doesn't get retweeted. 100,000 times and everybody sees it. No, the original thing, the original dirt that you just threw onto Novak Djokovic, that just stuck. And now that's part of all the other bits of dirt you threw at him and stuck. And all of the, the apologies, forgotten about. No one even gets to see them. So it's just, he just gets attacked. The apologies disappear and everybody remembers. Oh, do you remember that time when he said that thing? Oh, another, I oh, will add another one on, another one on, another one on. And it's like he's carrying... Mm. negativity around with him all the time 
And how is he supposed to get it off his back? Next press conference he goes to, someone will probably bring it up again. Look, there you go. It's back in the media again. And he's having to talk about it again. Leave him alone. Talk about the tennis. Talk about something positive. Or just talk about something he's done personally. Yeah, yeah. Like because his uh, the, on-court the, the, stuff. Yeah, because you can talk about some negatives. And I don't want to just make this all we're defending Djokovic for this and that, because there is some things which I've seen recently, which I will talk uh, about. Like we've got different people in the chat. We've got James here joining us. Uh, afternoon, mate. He said hey. he's unfairly treated 100%, but the fact he's a bit of a sore loser doesn't help, e.g. blaming injuries rather than praising the opposition. One thing I would say is he's always got a lot of respect for the opposition. When he loses or wins, you always see he comes to the net, embraces them, smiles, shakes their hand and congratulates them. He's always done that. He'd always compliment players for a good shot. I think the injuries thing is definitely a point. I think he definitely does. I think fabricate, fabricates a bit strong because I don't doubt he's got some kind of injuries. But they, he just sort of um, makes them a lot bigger than what they are if he loses. No doubt about it. I don't like that look. And then sort of moving on to, um, well, we've got 68 here saying all the tennis love was split between Rafa and Federer. At a certain point, Novak came along and much was used up. He feels it's kind of sad. Uh, I'm not his greatest fan, but I do feel for him. Yeah, it, it, it is tough. It yep. definitely is because it is true. He is the probably... He doesn't seem to get as much love as the other two. But then I would say that he's got a very passionate fan base who are a lot... They, they follow him a lot strongly than, say, any any other player. No doubt yeah. about it. They're very... The ones who are Djokovic fans, they are hardcore. Um, yeah, they definitely doesn't, doesn't seem are. to be too much in between, though. No, there's not. And uh, they all jump to his defence uh, at any possible opportunity. I just think it was sad he gets this sort of questions in press conferences like the recent Wimbledon one. Obviously, Marchenko did the funny uh, tweet about it and uh, with a little bad guy uh, song with a little head bobbing. But still, the question was there again. How do you feel uh, being the bad guy chasing Roger and Rafa to 20 grand? Yeah. Why, why, did the, why did that have to be the question? Why did you have to put the words bad guy in there? Why is there bad guy? Why is he a, he's just a normal, he's normal guy? It's not bad yeah. guy. Why, why does he have to be plastered with that? Because now that's out there again. Another bit of dirt stuck on you just from one word in one question. That's the, the thing problem. is, there's a, there's a lot of issues with media and you can break it down into loads of things. You've got like the media, the press conferences, you've got sort of the bigger corporations and then you've got social media. And I think there's issues with all of them. And yeah. the social media age, I agree here with uh, 68 saying about Donald Trump, what he sort of brought to social media all this fake news stuff and all this nonsense he used to tweet about that certain things what simply weren't mm. true. It's created a bit of a toxic environment, I feel. You can't That's just it. blame him, but it definitely is very toxic. And there's a lot of issues on social media with fake news and news, which it, it simply isn't true, and just propaganda. I think these big corporations, they have to do something to get together to kind of ensure that what's being broadcast is at least real and accurate. Um to a level because you, it's just not fair. It's just so damaging. It can it can reach such a wide amount of people and they get a complete wrong impression on something which mm. which isn't fair. Um, but but on the actual uh, st the antics of Djokovic, I know we've got some quotes up here from the, from Rafa, and this is where you can look at the other side of things. This is something which Nada uh, Djokovic actually has done, um, and obviously that was he, he threw his racket into the crowd earlier on against Bust. I think it was after was it after the first set. Think maybe so, in yeah. the start of the second and then at the end of the match or towards the end he smashed his racket up against the um yeah, into the post, post. and yeah. i think he got a point did he get pointed something or he got yeah. a, a violation of some kind i believe they did call that one out but they had there was no warning whatsoever on the other one and he threw his, his racket into the thing but an interesting thing to talk about is i don't think that's right i don't like it i agree with what rafa said and this is what rafa actually said luckily there were no people in the stands and nothing else happened but hey, there are things that happen from time to time. You have to try to avoid them. The image is not the best. And this is a little bit, probably a bit more ruthless, what he said in the next bit. It is important to avoid this, especially as a role model for many children. He is world number one and one of the best in history. It's strange that someone so successful reacts this way from time to time. But in the end, he's very competitive and reacts like that. So he was calling it a bit strange. He was saying it's a bad role model for children, all of which I completely agree about. Yeah. But one thing I would like to say is how comes all the emphasis is on Djokovic's actions when Medvedev 
a few days before against Kalenio Busta, the same player in the quarterfinals. He got knocked out by him. At the end of the match, after he lost, he smashed his racket on the floor. He picked it up and threw it into the stands. And there's a video <laughs> There's a video of it circulating online, but no one seems to really... You don't see everyone coming out and gunning for Medvedev in the same way when, mm. in theory, I, I agree that they should be held accountable for their actions, and I don't think it's correct, but Medvedev should be under the same level of scrutiny as what Djokovic does. And you can't tell me it's just Djokovic because he's the world number one because Medvedev, what's he, world number two? Exactly. Uh, so I... it's like, it's not that, that Medvedev is an unknown player. He's the world number two doing the same actions on the same tournament as well against the same yeah. player. What more can you, it's probably the same court. It's probably on the centre court as well. And he's doing the same thing, but he's not under the same level of scrutiny. Both for me are 50-50 and they're both wrong for doing it. And I think it isn't a good role model for, for, for children watching or anyone, not even just children. I think anyone watching the sport it's just not good it's not a good look for it and i think it needs to try and try and get out of the game because it is stupid it really well, I, is i think sometimes it can be dangerous as well i think that's an element we need to consider here obviously for me he wouldn't have thrown his racket in the stands if there was people there obviously he's not going to he's not that s stupid of he had the problem where he accidentally hit the line judge with the ball that was a freak accident. Obviously, he didn't mean to do that either. But it is dangerous on a court, and you've got to you've got to take your own actions into account when you're on the on the tennis court. And a lot of the people, like I know that McEnroe came out after that default, and he was very vocal, and he said, "You've it's you get heated out there." He was one of the most heated, and he said, "You've got to try and." like contain yourself a bit because think bad things can happen because you're in very close quarters with line judges with ball boys ball with little children on the court as well remember the ostapenko one she nearly yeah. slammed a racket into the ball boy's head at the back yeah. of the court just missed him by a, a little bit uh and Djokovic, he hit one in the throat if there'd have been some well if there'd have been a ball boy at the at the net i'm sure he would probably wouldn't have slammed his racket into the net post but it's just yeah, one you of those say things. that, mate. He did at the US Open, and he hit the ball and, into the, into that lady's neck or whatever, yeah. and ended up getting defaulted. So he has done it when there's people in the thing or line judges. It can be, and he's been, yeah. he's got in trouble for it. So it doesn't make sense. He's clearly not. That's why him are coming out and apologising for the US Open. What was the point, personally? Well, we did, if you're going to we... continue in the same antics, it's bored. Like it's just no point apologising. Well, that was um, the problem, though. From McEnroe said he said he didn't do the interview after the US Open though. He didn't do an, like an on-court or a press. He just left and then tweeted an apology. There was no like full real apology and then he said he didn't think he was ever going to be able to recover from this of being the bad guy in tennis. So McEnroe even threw another load onto Djokovic there which... Yeah but that's stinks. right though mate. I don't mind that. He should be... This is where you can be open to criticism because it's actual things he's done and it's yes. something which is wrong. But then it should be even for, say, someone like Medvedev. Because oh, I'm sure. a big fan of Medvedev. I love Daniel I'm... Medvedev. But he does the same thing. Yeah, He does the same thing. And it's only a matter of time until Medvedev gets defaulted from a tournament, I'm sure, because he'll probably keep doing it. And he's gonna. he's got a lot of lip with the thing. You can say it's a bit funny with the with the umpire. It, and I can understand the, uh, the, the whole curious factor of things making it entertainment. But there comes a line with everything. And I think at the moment, they, these guys are crossing the line because I don't watch what Djokovic does and think, oh, that's entertaining. He just smashed his racket and thrown it into the thing. I look at it and think, really? You're so good at tennis. You're the best, well, arguably the best player in the world right now. Why are you doing that? It's just, it is strange. I, I agree. I am very much on Rafa's side, not just because I'm a big fan of Rafa, but I look at what he does and I think it's weird. Why are you doing that? PCB, maybe. Maybe he just gets under people's skin so much he makes you do it. <laughs> Could be. I bet if you were playing him, there'd be about two or three rackets smashed up. <laughs> yeah, probably. That's for sure. But I totally agree with you, mate. I don't think that we should treat him differently to any of the other players on tour. Call them all out. If, if one player's doing it, call them out. Not just yeah. Djokovic. Everybody needs to be in the limelight. And if he has to apologize, everybody has to apologize. And everybody gets tarred with the same brush. You can't just say, oh, you're world number one. You have to act better than everyone else. 
it's the same rules for everyone apply. Mate, and something else, maybe I've got a point with this PCB hate. It seems like everyone does. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You've got the world number one, the world number two. Neither of them really seem to like him too much. It gets under their under their skin big time. Well, um, if Rafa but, plays him and then smashes his racket up next, then then we know that it's PCB. Yeah, but Rafa, when he plays PCB, usually gets it done in about double. 40 minutes and it's a Red double stick. breadstick. Yeah, <laughs> that's um, true, mate. Federer throws his racket at PCB, then we'll know that there's something going on. Yeah, but I think we, we'll wrap it up very shortly. But the main sort of theme we wanted to get from this is we are both on the same page with this and Djokovic gets an unfair ride with the media. The, the recent antics have highlighted it more than ever because he's not done anything. He was just talking about pressure, which in turn he didn't deal with very well. You can argue that. But... Yeah. It doesn't take it away from what he said. 100% I agree with. In fact, I like, I love the bravery of him coming out and saying that before he's played his matches. Um, I think that shows a real champion spirit. And I like everything he said. And it's nothing to do with Naomi Osaka, Simone Biles, or whoever you want to pin it on. Because he said that about his own personal uh, thing, uh, situation with the Golden Slam. Um, nothing about anything else. So he definitely gets an unfair ride. Even with all the uh, racket smashes and stuff, he gets an unfair ride. Because see, Medvedev did it. And I've looked at the chat and there's a lot of people who said, oh, I didn't know that. I don't think <laughs> exactly. you knew that, did you? No, I've exactly. sent you a video. No, mate. No I one knows. Exactly. And this is it. These other things that happen, they don't get promoted. No one retweeted that 100,000 times. So you don't get to see it. It's just swept under. Oh, Medvedev being funny again. <laughs> Joking with the umpire while he did it, probably. So it's all fine. But I think, I don't know, you've got to play a little bit devil's advocate here as well by saying, yes, we've got a Rafa. Yes, we've got a Roger. Yes, they're great. They're friendly. They're... Is it not good to have somebody who's a little bit different, who isn't the squeaky clean up the top? Somebody who's, it, it, I know it seems like you're playing the villain role, but... He's not. He's just being himself at the end of the day. And you can't criticize a person for being themselves. He should try and contain his emotions a bit more. But yeah. if he can't, and that's just who he is, sometimes you just have to accept who people are. As long as he doesn't really, really hurt anybody. I obviously is very apologetic after the US Open. But as long as he doesn't injure anybody or himself, I think some people are just going to have to accept that is who Novak Djokovic is. Yeah, I guess so. That's when I just want to also announce I'm not moving over to Null Fam permanently. <laughs> this is not this is JD's, not a big move. Yeah, it's coming over. This is not a big move from me with the Serbian flag going. I'm Team Djokovic now the whole way, and I want him to be the overall goat and the overall Grand Slam leader. I'm just standing up for what's right. And anyone doesn't matter what player you support or who you like. If you know tennis and you understand what's happening right now, you have to stick up for Djokovic because it's totally unacceptable and we will not tolerate no fake news on the Game to Love podcast. I totally agree with that, mate. I'm still Team it... Rafa. Vamos! Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, Washington on the horizon and uh, Rafa's first match on the horizon right now. I think it's tomorrow, isn't it? So yeah. you never know if it's on at a decent time. We might be able to cover that one for you. Yeah, for sure. I think we'll wrap it up there. Big thanks to everyone who joined us for this one. Uh, let's leave a like for Djokovic and, and to show our support for him. And if you're new to Game to Love, hit the subscribe button. We'll be back uh, maybe later on tonight. I'm not sure. We might, maybe we're doing the Kyrgios match. Um, we're going to have to see what our patrons want uh, because ultimately it's going to be decided by the patrons whether we do this watch along. And if you fancy joining the patron, let us, um, well, don't let us know. Join it. <laughs> join join the <laughs> Patreon. The link, the link is in the description. It's not in the live chat. So go check it out. And from $3 a month, is it? I think the Pounds. lowest package, £3. Yeah. You can join the lowest tier and be part of some of the selection process on some of our live watch-alongs. Indeed, mate. I think that's it. We'll wrap it up and see you yep. guys a bit later. See you guys.